Hey guys, um, back for some more Millennium Falcon building. Um, we've got another eight issues, eight issues, four issues. I'm looking at the eight. Um, so we've got 81, 2, 3, and 4 by the looks. So I think we're just building the other loading mandible, the uh, port side. And I shall endeavour to get the recesses the right way around this time. I've decided the mistake I made last week, I'm not going to try ripping it apart and it's not really worth buying another set of man another whole mandible for it so i'm just going to i'll know that there's a couple of bits in there the wrong way around but it's not the end of the world i can disguise it and put some extra pipe work in etc so no biggie but um yeah it was a bit silly at the time but uh, hopefully i stopped some other people from falling into the same mistake by warning you ahead of time anyway let's crack on and see what we're doing in issue 81 Okay, uh, fairly reason well, reasonably easy bit just to um, get started this week. It's just detailing these recesses uh, and then uh, either spray them or not, depending on how you're choosing to finish your model, whether you're doing it later or doing it now. Um, but uh, I think I probably will get some shade in there because obviously we can't open this up once it's done. I'm very, I'm still very surprised that these mandibles aren't done in a way that you can take them apart afterwards. But uh, there we go. That's why I fell into the mistake I made last week. I just thought, ah, oh, well, it's all right. We'll be able to open them up later. Never mind. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's crack on and I'll meet you a bit further in. Hi, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm working on the second mand uh, mandible, as you know. And uh, while I'm, I've, I've light blocked it as I normally do. And while I'm waiting for the paint to dry, I thought, well, I'll just test the other light in the mandible because what I want to do is I want to get a little LED lo red light alongside. There's lots of uh, marker lights around the underside which I want to add at some point. They're not, I don't think they're going to be part of the kit. So I thought well I'll just test this um, LED um, which is the sort of spotlight and it's fine, it works fine. Um, however, if you look very closely above and below you can see the light is just pouring straight through the plastic. So Basically, what that means is I'm going to take off, unscrew the PCB, uh, and then I'm going to mask off and paint and light block that inside because the light's just pouring through it above and below. So you can tell it's plastic and not metal. So, so that's going to come out, and I'll uh, I'll do that as I'm light locking the rest of it. But I think also when I'm in there, I'm going to look to see. I think there's just about room to get a little red LED up alongside it I hope I'm going to try that maybe even a bit of fiber optic or something but but that um, that light bleeding through needs to be sorted okay that's the uh, the headlamp unit if you like or the end of the, um, the front loading mandible so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask along the edge of that square and I'm just going to paint down inside that and I also want to see if it's possible to maybe get a fiber optic in there, although I'm not so sure now. It's uh, not as much room as I'd hoped. Maybe pop one down beside the tube where the other light goes, I'm not sure. Anyway, but the first thing to do is, block, is to light block it. Okay, uh, I've just put um, the primer on there for now. I'll come back and do the silver afterwards, but uh, those bits are done so those can go back inside and uh, we can then start assembling um, but yeah I think uh, I think those lights at the ends are going to look a lot better once they're light blocked it's just uh, there's quite a bit bleeding through the plastic hey guys right I'm um, <clears throat> actually making sure I got these in the right way around this time believe it or not but um, just a little reminder there's the screws that go into those they're the uh, the short brass self tappers not the long ones otherwise you'll go right through the surface it doesn't make it too clear I don't think um, fit the screws and lugs around yeah um. <sighs> yeah check it's the right way around and then just it just says use the brass self tapping screws it doesn't say whether the long or the short ones okay, and that's basically what you should have at the end um, so it's all done it's light blocked uh, and uh, I've got those in the right way around this time, would you believe? Anyway, right, so that's it uh, for this particular issue. Uh, it's number 81, so let's um, get straight on to issue 82.
Okay, so here we got issue 82. More mandible stuff. Basically, we're really just repeating what we did on the last four with this four. We're just doing the other side. Um, so, won't spend too much time repeating. I'll uh, just crack straight on. Okay, stage 82. Uh, we're on, I'm on the assembly of the, uh, the sort of little greeblies, the handrails and the bars and the piping and everything. Um, <clears throat> I've not quite finished page 11 yet because I'm waiting for it to dry. I've just done my usual light blocking thing, but all I've got to do is wait for it to dry and then just screw it to the framework. So there's nothing really to, to see there. But this I thought I might just help you, you, well, some of you with. I mean, I know a lot of you, if you've got this far, you're probably you know, pretty experienced with it by now. But for anyone who's still not sure or, or maybe, um, you know, they've picked this up late, maybe someone that was helping them before, there's, there's quite a lot of these very thin pipes and when they come off the sprue there's some nasty little lumps on them and the temptation as it is with most of these things is to get a knife find the little bit that's to come off and, and basically do that but because this is so thin and quite brittle if you do that when you put a lot of pressure in there it will bend and snap or it will just bend and, and never never be completely straight again so if you've got a bit of nasty um, sprue sort of here as it were these two these four parts there's actually this there's some supposed oh there are there's an example that there is actually a little bit of nasty right on the very corner I don't know if you can see it's very very hard to get to focus can you see on the on right in the corner there's a little bit of a nasty lump now those are part of it, we need those because that's what it's going to stick into the fuselage with and there's another little nasty lump just there can you see it? so instead of going after those with a knife which will just end up badly um, see if I, if I try and do that it starts to try and bend it and, and I can't do it without bending it so on these little tiny ones when, it's, when there's a real risk that you're going to break the piece bring in a, a little needle file or something and just very slowly sort of tickle it off really um, and then you're not going to run any risk of of splitting it or breaking it I'm trying to keep it in frame for you here okay that piece now at the end is, is pretty clean we've got the bar that we want at the end if I can show you this against a darker background, here we go. So we've, we've got the bit we want, but we've lost the unsightly bit that we didn't want. And there's another one at this end, right on this corner. You see it, just knobbly bit sticking out there. I'm going to do the same thing. Just put it against the darker background. I'm trying to find your background where it will show up against. Um, should really do it on the tripod, I suppose. But it's much more organised that way and it's sort of a little bit less natural. It's not like I'm sort of sitting next to you working on the same model and can be so spontaneous, you know, you have to pre-plan a bit more and I think then that's not quite so informative because you don't always think of saying everything when you when you actually plan it all out. Right then, okay, so there, actually there's still a little bit more to go but it's it's almost gone, it's just a little bit more I can see, just like a little lump on an elbow um, so I'm just going to do a little bit more of that literally it's just right on the corner and don't, don't try and take too much at once because it will just break just go very gently and almost tickle it off That's looking pretty tidy. So there's a, a big nasty lump gone off of both ends. So um, I hope that's helpful to somebody. And that's that piece in. One thing I'm doing as well is um, because this is quite small and fiddly, I'm not using the ends of the super glue. I'm transferring it to the top of a little jam jar here and then transferring it to the part on a cocktail stick so I've got a lot more control. 
One interesting thing I've discovered, I had a pretty hot summer this year. Um, it was a couple of days when it was sort of 30, I think we had 33, 34 at one point. And it looks like a lot of my Gorilla Super Glue gel isn't gel anymore. It's gone very, very liquid since the hot weather. So I'm assuming uh, it probably tells us about storage, storing it in a cool place. But, um, but yeah, it's definitely gone from being a gel to being very, very liquid after getting a bit warm in the shed. So you learn something new every day. Hi, uh, right, another little tip. <clears throat> this piece, uh, this is piece number seven, was really bent. Um, the end had all been sort of obviously squashed in the uh, in the wrapper and it was all bent up. So I've had to straighten it because it's got to go, basically it's going to go just in there. Always dry fit pieces first in case you get half stuck in and then you realise the rest of it isn't going to go. So half of it goes into a little recess there just in there and then the other half I'm looking at, I'm showing you the wrong one I beg your pardon getting too close there we go that one that one goes into that little recess there uh, it'll sit down a bit better than that once it's glued but this side I've got it in the hole now but initially there's no way that was going to go anywhere near the hole it just wanted to spring off at about that angle it was going to miss it by quite a bit so what I did find is um, to avoid breaking this, uh, just heat that end up, heat it under, put it under a little bit of warm water or, you know, really hold it in your hands and just, just very, very slowly sort of try and do it. But do it with a bit of heat, it will soften the plastic and it won't be so brittle and won't snap so easily. And I think I'm going to get away with that. We'll have a look in a minute. Okay, it did go in, but it definitely needs a little bit of reshaping. You see, even now it's trying to pull back but uh, I put quite a generous bit of super glue down in the recess in the hole in there and uh, I think we'll be all right okay uh, there's another bit of sprue we can get rid of as those pipes are now all in place not too bad wee bit fiddly some of them but uh, not too bad and uh, much easier if you put the right indentations in unlike I did last week but yeah, not too bad. So I'm going to go and get the um, painted parts from the shed, which will be dry by now. Finish putting the rest of the uh, the tip of the the other half. I think it's the top of the mandible together. I think this is the bottom. Um, and then we'll have something that looks very much like that, and an extra bit as well, which looks like that. And then I think we're ready for, yeah we are, that's the end of issue 82, so I'll go and finish that off and then we'll get on with 83. Speaking of paint drying, uh, this is now done, so I've just light blocked the inside, there's not really any need to do the, uh, the outside bits, so let's go and see if that solves the problem. So I'm just going to... Uh, Put the camera down when I mount that back on there and then we'll see uh, we'll see what happens when we turn the light on. Okay, so there's that light. I think that's fine, but it's a lot less. There's still a little bit and there's not much we can do about that apart from painting the outside, which I still may do. Um, but it's it's reduced it a bit. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can get another little LED up on the inside of that. I think they should be on the inside. I'll have to watch the film again to see where exactly they are. But... Um, there we go, it's, it's uh, nice to see something lit up. Okay, right, that's the end of that section. So that's um, stage 83 and uh, we're up to the end of page 11. So we've got the two inserts done. Uh, some quite fiddly little bits in there, but uh, we're all sorted. Um, now I've already light blocked them, so they're ready to go in. So um, it's just really the final assembly, a, f a few little last pieces on the hull and it looks like we're going to be done for this issue. So um, I'll come back and show you the end result. Okay, and this is my helper for this week. This is uh, the amazing Inky. And uh, you may see a little bit more of him, I don't know. He's very helpful, likes to stick around, especially if there's food around.
Okay, so we're at the end of stage 83. That's pretty much what you should have. Um, the only difference with mine and the one in the book is I haven't pre-shaded the insides of those equipment bays, which to me just looks far too dark. I, I much rather have them like that and then just sh uh, shadow them later with a wash or something. But I still may paint the surface yet, so we'll see. Okay, so that's end of issue 83. Let's crack on with 84. Okay, and we're on to the final issue. So we've got issue 84. Looks like we're finishing the last of the mandibles. Excuse the oven there. And um, then we can move on to something else. Right, I'll make a start and we'll see what we're doing this time. Okay, so pretty much uh, the same as we've been doing. We're just finishing off this last mandible. Uh, there's a little bit of surface detail to go on first and then it looks like we're into uh, assembly. Um, now it's interesting because I showed you earlier on when I was fixing the, or testing the LED on the front of the, uh, which one is this? This one's the ports of the starboard mandible. Now you may remember I said I was going to have some little red marker lights and it's very nice of Diagostini to put them just there for us so that's where they need to go. Now I reckon there is just room to fit one on the inside of the main bulb because the main bulb is going to be around there so I think we're just going to I'm just going to try and either slip a little LED up the side of it or if it's not enough room for that then I'll maybe sort of that I know one mil fiber optic something of that nature but I'll show you how I'm going to do that when the time comes but for now we're just going to finish off the detailing and assemble the second mandible see you later and just in case you're wondering my helper is still here this is Inky Full name Inky Poo. Now he's one of the brightest, if not the brightest cat I've ever met. Not that he's going to really display that or show us right now because he's just getting comfy waiting for some dinner. But uh, in case you saw him earlier on and you're wondering where he is, he's still there. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of stage 84. Um, so that's this block of, of four issues done. So. Um, what I was doing though, just before I finished, I was looking at the, the end of this as the first mandible. Now, you've got the hole in the centre which takes the large white LED, but there should be, if I'm going to do all the red marker lights, there should be lots of little red markers around the lower hull. So, and there should be some on the inside edge um, of these. So it's going to sit roughly, if the light is there, I think the actual red light would be about here. Now that's going to be a problem because at the exact same place on the other side we have this here for the screw mounting hole. So options are one, remove it, but I don't want to do that because then this may not sit straight. Well, actually no, it would sit straight because the four lugs will hold it in place. Um, but what I'm thinking I might try and do is just get something small down in here, either a tiny LED or a red, op a red fiber, or fiber optic rather with a red LED behind it. That's the LED I think I'm going to use. That's about the right size. That's a 3 mil flat-ended um, LED. It's got the resistor in there for 12 volts. I use these a lot on my model builds. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to try and get that up inside. If I can keep you in frame. And see if I can just slot that up alongside there. Now there's a little tiny flange on the edge of that and if I remove that the 3 mil for the LED is pretty much just enough room to go up the side of this screw hole which means I can drill a hole right on the very very center of this at the edge which might be okay um, the details not been done around it obviously because Diagostini didn't plan for this but I think it would make a nice little enhancement to have all those little red lights on the bottom as well as the landing lights, which I don't think they're putting in the kit either. Um, this is some of the original lighting that I've been always threatening to put in with this. Um, so I thought it was about time I actually made a made a look, you know, I had a, had a, made a start and had a look at uh, how I'm going to do it. But I think that's the sort of size um, would be okay. Let's just hold that and get some power on it. If you can imagine that just there, 
on the inside edge coming through from inside obviously I think that would look pretty good so that really is the end of this issue um, I hope it's been of some help fortunately I didn't make any mistakes this week I've actually got everything in the right place da, da, da. Um, still kicking myself about the other one I could still go back and just order another three issues and redo it but I don't think it's that much of a problem I'm going to conceal it fairly well and unless I go and put a great big sign saying this bit's in the wrong place I don't think many people would notice so um, uh, so that's it for now so I'll um, say goodbye for now thanks for watching I hope it's been useful um, thanks for all the fantastic comments I get guys on these videos uh, really really nice to know that uh, uh, they're appreciated and they can be of help so um, all good stuff. Anyway, thanks a lot, take care, and I'll catch you next time.